Okay, example four, we're going to be doing nesting if statements. So you can nest anything that has a begin and an end. Um, any construct in, in the programming language that has a begin and an end. Nesting means putting something else inside of the begin and the end. Uh, but we're going to be starting off with nesting if statements because we're talking about if statements. And before we get into the code, I just want to show you what this example four program is doing. So I think it'll, I don't know, I think in this case it might be cool to just see the program run first. So I'm going to hit F5, I'm going to run it, and my, my computer seems to be talking to me. Hello there. So I don't know what to do. I'm just going to hit enter. And it said, oh, you don't want to talk to me. Oh, that's sad. So I think I did something wrong. So maybe I'll type something this time. So I'll run it again. Hello there. And I'll say, yo, what's up? Sorry, I didn't understand what you said. Okay, so my computer is or at least my program is apparently not very good at recognizing phrases in the English language. So let me dumb it down a little bit. It said hello there, and I'm just going to say hi. Oh, so now we're getting somewhere. So he understood, she understood that. What is your name? I'll say Donnie. Nice to meet you, Donnie. Well, that was kind of fun. So it's almost like I have a little artificial intelligence going on. Um, it's not really artificial intelligence, but obviously it was uh, something starting some type of user interaction between me and my uh, program. So first of all, before I, before I show you the real code, notice at the bottom here I have two functions that I wrote, two methods that I wrote. Um, one of them is message from computer that takes some text, changes the foreground color to green, and does some right line for me. So I wanted to be able to just call this instead of having to write this console console right line, change the foreground color, write the text, write a space, and then reset the color. So this is just some repeatable code that I wanted to do. So a green message from my computer. And also at the end of the program I wanted to be able to just print out uh, press any key to continue and then wait for them to strike a key. So this is all below my main program because I didn't want to muddy it up. Okay, so the very first instruction, line 7, is message from the computer, hello there. We obviously saw what that did, and then it sits there and it waits for me to write in a string. So that's all that happened there. So there's the message from my computer, the green hello there, and then it's sitting there waiting for me to type in a string. So here's something that's familiar. We say an if statement. And this is a big mess of if else if else it's you know when I, if i don't look at it carefully this can look really confusing so i want you to think back to the first thing that i did when i ran the program i and the computer said hello there the first thing that i did is i just struck the key i just hit enter without typing anything in so in that case my input string was empty and because of that the input length was 0 so I want you to look really carefully at this if, and I want you to notice that this is the beginning of the if statement, and you have to find, the trick is to find the matching end. So you notice how those two uh, begin and end on line 12 and line 32 are highlighted. It's because those are a matching set of begins and ends. So line 32 is actually the end of the if statement, and line 12 is the beginning of the if statement. The reason it's hard to read is because all that stuff is the body of that if statement. So if I just cut that out of there for a second, now it looks just like we were looking at in the previous examples where we said if, do that, else, do that. And you can see clearly that regardless of what was inside of the if statement, when we typed in nothing, this condition was going to be false. It was going to skip over the if statement and then come into the else clause and say, oh, you don't want to talk to me because the length was not greater than zero. So in that first scenario, regardless of how much code I have inside of that first if statement, it's, it's going to skip, all, skip over all of it anyway. And we can see that in action. If I put a breakpoint there. It says hello there, I hit enter. 
my input length is 0, which is not greater than 0, so the next line of code is 29, the beginning of the else. And it just says you don't want to talk to me. So you have to watch the begins and the ends. You have to understand that this is nothing, all of that is nothing but the body of this first if statement. So it really takes a way of looking at it. Um, it takes being able to visually match up the begins and the ends and visually match up which areas of code are the bodies of the if statement and the else statement. So that section that I have highlighted there is the body of the first if statement. So if the input length is greater than zero, that code is going to get executed. So it's almost like once you know that you've entered this first block, you kind of ignore everything else and say, okay, now I'm inside of the first block of the if statement. I'm going to start executing these instructions. So in a way, you can kind of the font wasn't so huge. You could look at this all by itself and say, this is what I'm going to do as long as the user doesn't enter nothing. So this here is less than all of this. So by narrowing down what you're looking at, looking at and thinking about, the problem starts to get easier to, to look at. So as you can see here, this is what I'm doing in the case that the user inputs something. And all it is is an if-else. Because this stuff here, remember, that's nothing but the code that gets executed if the if statement is true. So look at the condition. It says, okay, so I know I'm inside of here. I know I'm inside of the condition that said, well, the user input something. So I'm in the situation where the, in the user input something. That's what this is. So I say, okay, the user input something. Now let's look to see if it contains hi or if it contains hello. So if it, you, if it contains hi or hello, it's going to come in here and do whatever is in here, that thing that I just cut out. But let's just focus on the else. If there is no hi or hello, like the first time I said, yo, what's up, then this is going to be false, and it's going to come down here and say, sorry, I didn't understand what you said. So basically, the, the program, the way it's written now, only understands something that contains hi or hello. And that right there is the code that exists inside of this first if statement. So again, if I just blow all that away and just look at that, it doesn't look so bad. So I'm only running this code in the case where I entered in something that contained a hi or a hello. And in that case, I say, what is your name? And the input again is read from the user. We check the length of it, and if they entered anything at all, which I did, we say, nice to meet you, Donnie. And if again we hit enter and nothing else, we say, you don't have a name that's kind of strange. Well, that, well, we didn't test that case yet at all, so let's go back and try that. So let's try to see if we can hit that one. So to hit that one, we need to do the same thing we did before, but when they ask me for the name, I put in nothing. Hello there. Hello. What is your name? I'm just going to hit enter. You don't have a name that's kind of strange. So, you know, usually we're not cutting cutting the code up to, to make sure that we can visualize the logic, but <clears throat> if you can kind of visualize it yourself just from looking at it, that right there, and you can see the highlight, is the begin and the end of the first if statement, and this is the else clause of that if statement. So as long as you say to yourself, oh, that's just this, that's just the code inside of the first if statement, which is the user typed in something. Then you start to think, okay, let me just think that, let me just say to myself, the user did type in something, therefore I'm going to enter this if statement up here. Now I'm thinking about this and I'm saying, what's this condition? The user either typed in hi, hello, or they didn't. So that's this if statement here. So I'm either entering that block or that block. And if I enter in the top one, they entered in hi or hello. Then I get in, inside of this code, 
and then we have one final if statement here. So it's definitely a little harder to follow, and it ends up being um, logically the same as, as uh, kind of and statements. For example, I can't get into here unless I type in something that is greater than zero, and I type in something that creates hi and hello. So nesting these if statements can produce logical behavior like and, sort of. But let's debug through this in a, um, let's say, let's just do the original scenario where we, where we got the nice to meet you. So my computer says hello there, I'm going to type in hi there. So that contains a hi. Alright, so here we are. Line 11. It says, if input.length is greater than or equal to zero, which it is, so now we will enter that if statement. Okay. So we're inside of the if statement that starts on line 12 and ends on line 32. Now it's going to say if the input contains hi or hello, which is also true. So now we're going to hit this if statement. So I'm gonna, I want to pause here and point out the thing that I've been saying over and over again you can only hit one block of each if statement. So since we entered in th this if statement and we also entered in this if statement, we, we'll, we cannot hit that else and we cannot hit that else. This else belongs to this if statement and we already entered in the if block. So we will not get the else for that because we already proved this condition was true and we, we cannot enter in this block down here unless the condition is false. We already proved that this condition is true by entering in there, and we can only enter in this block if that condition is false, because this else, elf, this else statement is a part of this if statement. This else, else statement is a part of that if statement. Since both of those conditions were true, we can't hit either of those blocks because they belong to if statements the conditions were true. So now we know we're never going to come here into either of those else blocks and we just entered this if block so we're about to execute that code there. So we get the message from the computer, what is your name? It's going to ask us to enter in another string, Donnie. And now um, it checks to see if that what I just typed in is greater than zero, and it is. So now I come into here, and by virtue of coming into here, it's going to skip over that. So since this if statement and that if statement and that if statement were all true, none of the else's can possibly get hit. The else can only get hit if the condition for an if statement is false, such that it will skip the first block and enter the else block. That is why you know, finally understanding all of this, it might seem confusing that we jump from line 22 all the way down to line 38. But when you think about it, that else will not be hit because this if statement's condition was true. That else condition, that else block will not get hit because this if statement's condition was true. And this else block will not get hit because this if statement's condition was true. So it should jump from 22 all the way down to 38, or at least Sorry. Oh yeah, first the end of the if statement, the first if statement, then the end of the top if statement, and then finally down to line 38. So none of the else's got entered. So the key to understanding nesting is that every time you enter a block that is something that is surrounded by a begin and an end, you can continue writing other statements that contain their own blocks. You can have an if statement inside of an if statement. Uh, you can keep uh, nesting if statements inside of each other uh, forever. Uh, well, not forever, but for quite a long time. And nesting is generally, you know, I, uh, this is kind of more of a design statement and a matter of opinion, but nesting is generally considered a bad thing. Um, so certainly if I looked at this code uh, you know, at work or, or wherever, I would have some concerns about it. Um, it's hard to read, it's confusing, but just like I said before, um, it's important to be able to 
write and read code like this so that you can understand the, the foundational logic and come up with better techniques at expressing the same action or the same logic. So you certainly need to be able to, to master this type of thing, um, but nobody's going to blame you for looking at code like this and being like, this is hard to read, because honestly this code is hard to read. Um, nested code is, is, is hard to read, and um, you know every time you create a new nest, you're creating a new scope, which we're going to learn about in, in the fifth and final video. Um, and you know you, you kind of don't want to do that. Uh, it's not necessarily bad, but it's but every time you add a nest, you're contributing a little more complexity to the code. And I would say that you know once again, being able to understand nests like this is is important, critical. You need to be able to do it. But at the same time, it's usually a red flag to say that maybe we can do something to simplify this code a little bit. And there's always there's always ways to do that. So. Um, you know, at least be able to understand, uh, you know, basic nesting. Um, it's okay if it gets too, too complicated, if you can't, you know, can't figure it out or you have trouble reading it. It's totally normal. I, I have trouble reading nested if statements all the time. But, um, you know, it's a, it's a skill that we have to cover and at least talk about it so that you won't be totally lost when you read it. And uh, you probably will end up writing code in your life where you look at it after you wrote it and said, oh my god, there's too many nested if statements. And that's a, a, good, I a good idea to go back and maybe simplify it a little bit. So, uh, you know, that probably wasn't the easiest thing it to follow, but that's kind of, it's kind of the point to, to sh at least show you what it's doing and to be able to uh, identify nested code and know what that means and uh, may maybe understand that there might be better ways to do it. Um, so finally, you know, I said that kind of every time you create a new nest, you're creating a new scope. Um, every time you have a begin and an end, you're kind of creating this thing called a scope. And uh, I'm going to be talking about that in the next and final video for section four.